really shouldn't concern me all this much. However, we have evidence now that someone, at least one person in Kentucky, possibly has the Zika virus. Joining us on 700 WLWZ Skeeters make their way northward, kind of like the killer bees back in the 70s where they would come down from uh, Mexico and warmer climes, subtropical climates, and come northern uh, and to attack us here in Cincinnati. Never came to fruition, but it looks like Zika is here. Mosquito, Steve, how you been? I've been great. How about you guys, I, I am, Everything is fine here. Thank you very much. And is that a self-inflicted nickname, or did someone actually call you Mosquito Steve? Well, it was actually my nickname. I belong to this group, and there's a bunch of Steves in it, and people would say, you know that Steve, you know Mosquito Steve. And so when I was looking <laughs> for a name, it's like, well, it just fits. Oh, boy, I don't know. That can't be that big with the ladies. Something about Mosquito Steve, I just it doesn't seem like the ladies would like that nickname too much. But no, yeah, no. i got to tell you, my social life is very, it's gonna very It's going to be terrible. Oh, really mos- <laughs> mosquito. Okay, it's just, uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's talk about Zika coming to uh, Kentucky. Northern Kentucky, we have the first confirmed case of Zika in northern Kentucky. Kentucky, um, which did we ever think it'd get this uh, this this far northward? Um, yeah, I think so. And and here's the thing: as it transfers over into the Culex mosquito, which it is mm-hmm. doing, mm-hmm. then it's going to continue to crawl north. So it so, is going. Yeah, is, that's it'll, the it'll thing. Covers. Because cause this guy, I guess he went to an area where Zika is pretty prevalent, um, and then comes back. He winds up um, he winds up uh, getting it, and but the problem is he gets bit by a mosquito here back in Kentucky and Ohio. Will the mosquitoes then carry the Zika virus to other people? Well, and that's this is what bothers me is that they're telling everybody where deep. I can tell you right now, deep weight breaks down in forty five minutes. So if you're going overseas where Zika is and you don't want to get it, wear something better than deep, first of all. And then when you come back, refrain refrain from having sex for four days. <laughs> I mean that's really all it takes. That's not and, a problem for you, Steve, problem. but yeah, not yeah, a problem for you, but right, the rest exactly. of us. Yeah, uh, change your name, change your name, mosquito Scott, and you'll get caught off. Um, so in that in in that regard, though, I mean that's easier said than done, right? Is for why for? Because that's how long it takes for it to incubate in the system, and so once it's gone, then you don't have to worry about it. It literally is just four days. So I mean, that's all they got to do is just stop. How many? Stop. Uh, how, how many? How many cases of Zika have we had confirmed now in this last one? Well, we've had hundreds and hundreds. We we actually, the first one was here in Dallas, and it was. It was somebody got it over there, came back immediately, uh, slept with their spouse, and they got it. Mm. And so if if you're not pregnant, it's really, it's a mild flu is all it is if you're not pregnant. So, again, if you feel sick when you come back, you know, just why would you want to have sex if you're feeling sick anyways? Do people really have sex when they have the flu? Come on. Well, that's probably true right there if you're not feeling well, right? I I have a headache thing. Mosquito, Steve, here's a problem I have with this thing. and Certainly Zika is a cause for concern. However, uh, we've had, what, uh, some 800 cases, I think, in the United States as of Wednesday, maybe 16 from Ohio and Kentucky, and so we've had 800 cases, uh, which sounds uh, terrific. However, to put this in perspective, last year around 30,000 Americans died from the flu. No one's died from Zika. We have 800 infections, people infected with it, which is very serious, Marcosophily, things like that. However, to put it in perspective, 30,000 people a year die from the flu. Absolutely. That's what that's what I keep telling people. Look, it's always a good idea to wear protection when you go outside. And if you don't like wearing things like DEET and chemicals that are, are natural uh, products you can wear. So, you, you know, but it, it just makes sense to protect yourself. West Nile virus is the one, it's still the one that we need to worry most about. You know, we've had years where, you know, over 4,000 people have died from West Nile virus in the U.S. So, so that would be a bigger concern for me. But the thing is, the, the mosquitoes carry 150 different pathogens. I really don't think you want any of them. And cephalitis is not fun. Neither is dengue, chicken, gunya. So let's just keep all of them out. How about that? Why don't we do this? Is there a way, and I mentioned this on a previous show, is, is what good do mosquitoes do? Well, they're, they're food is what they are. They're food for a lot of animals, bats and birds. And so... Um, you know, I, I'm here's the thing. I'm kind of neutral on the GMO. They're you know genetically modifying the mosquitoes because I don't really know long term what that's going to do for us. But they are a tremendous amount of food source for for a lot of different kind of species. And so I would recommend we be very careful in that area. But you know, there's 3,500 different um, mosquito breed species across the world. We've got about um, probably about 150 of them here in the U.S. And so um, so there's a whole bunch more. There's plenty of mosquitoes. They're probably going to outlive the cockroaches. 
<laughs> I, I, I thought it, th this thing started, too, as kind of like an Internet, I don't know, scare or something along those lines, is that uh, you had, um, and I, I don't know where it started, but there's a company, a British company, I believe, that did some research into inflicting somehow sterile mosquitoes into the population so that they would uh, breed more sterile mosquitoes, and that is simply kill off the population of mosquitoes. Uh, kind of from within, a little genetically modified kind of thing going on right there. Uh, and they're saying this is, you know, as as with any type of thing, there's a certain percentage that it won't affect. It'll make a super mosquito. And they're, they're contemplating that this may have what happened years ago is we bred the super mosquito that's causing the Zika virus. Uh, it seems a little far-fetched to me. How about you? And not to me. That's actually, that's kind of the camp I'm in. Here's the thing. In North Texas, we had a drought for about three years. It was really bad. Puddles used to stick around for about two weeks, so the mosquitoes' larval stage in North Texas yeah. was about two weeks. In just a few years, their larval stage cut down to five days because puddles don't stick around two weeks. Mosquitoes adapt extremely fast. So, yes, I do believe that if their species is endangered, something will happen that they will overcome it. Yeah, at some point, too. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, you know, the thing is, too, I think also – that, um, uh, you know, wouldn't the bats, the other animals, would wind up finding something else as a food source? Wouldn't they adapt if you got rid of them? Because the mosquitoes, what good are they? No one likes them. They fly around, they buzz you, they ruin your picnic, they carry things like dengue and, and uh, Zika virus and malaria and things that are generally harmful to human beings. Absolutely. So I, here's the thing. I think that we should be testing that. I absolutely think we should be testing it. But I can tell you right now, you know, none of, we've been doing poisons for years. In fact, you remember back when I was growing up, the tobacco companies were, you know, telling Congress, oh, smoking doesn't hurt you. Well, those same public relations people are now doing the public relations for chemical companies, you know. So we've been, we, we have not been able to eliminate them by just spraying and trying to kill everything. I doubt we'll be able to get rid of them by genetically modifying, but I definitely think we should be looking at it. I think we should be looking at all alternatives. There are natural alternatives that are better than chemicals, though. There are. That's what I've been doing. That's what my whole research over the last 14 years has been bringing, you know, a product forward that's better than the chemicals. And so, uh, so I think what we've got to do is we've got to be open mind and then you just got to take care of yourself. Individual responsibility. Everybody take care of yourself. Spray yourself down. Don't ask the city to spray and protect you. Spray yourself down. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, hose yourself off. Or how about this? Just don't travel to areas where there's Zika. How about that? Wouldn't that be incredible? Not yeah. a bad idea, right? It's really not. I have a, a guy that just bought like 170 bottles of mosquito repellent from me and had to ship it over. He's getting married down in the Virgin Islands. And, you know, but at least, you know, that's part of their gift bag is, you know, play, wear the repellent when you go out there. And that's the thing. If people will wear repellent when they're outdoors, when they're down in places like that, they'll be protected. Well, what's the best kind of mosquito repellent? Because, you know, you go to the store and, and there's uh, tons of the stuff all over the place, uh, you know, different brands. Et I don't know what I'm looking for. Okay, so I've done hundreds and hundreds of tests to test my products and everybody else's. And I can tell you right now, any deep product that I had, I've y'all heard the story. You know, I've had 900 mosquito bites in one night. I probably had closer to 1,500. So um, I got West Nile virus in 2008. So, mm. you know, I, I stay sick now pretty much. But, but here's what I know. Deep, most deep products break down in 45 minutes. So it says on the label they last six hours. They break down in about 45 minutes. Every single test I did, that was the case. Mm. So. So except for like Deep Woods Off. Deep Woods Off actually lasted almost two hours. I actually have a repellent that lasted longer than Deep Woods Off. So and this, these are real-world testing. This is not in the lab. These are with real mosquitoes in the real world, and that's why I do what I do. That's why I subject myself to all that pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want that. MosquitoSteve.com is a website. Is that correct? That's it. That's the guy right there. All right, thanks again, Steve. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, thank you. Have a great day. You too, man.